Remember yesterday, we read a little bit about how Bat decided he was doing his research and emailing the professional trying to dig up every piece of evidence so he can keep the work. Let's see how that moves on forward. Chapter 17 is called At the Clinic. Bat loved going to Mom's veterinary clinic. If it were up to him, he would go with her every time she had to work late instead of staying home with Janie. But mom said that as much as she loved having Bat at work with her, all his questions sometimes kept the vet techs from doing their jobs. Bat tried not to ask so many questions. There were just so many interesting things to ask questions about. Today you can help Lawrence with Bat, mom told Bat as she drove him the three miles from the Sawwet School to the small brick building marked Valerie Pam UVM. Janie was always trying to get mom to rename her veterinary clinic. Something fun, she'd say, something creative. So far, she had suggested the Furry Friends Clinic, pause for a moment, veterinarian, nose to tail and everything in between, and her favorite, the Pawspital. <laughs> The hospital. Like pause? Kind of like mm -hmm. hospital, but hospital because it was oh, for oh, animals. Oh, you get it? Yeah. yeah. But Bat liked seeing Mom's name on the side of the building. It was like she was a celebrity. I'm good at Bat, Bat said. Yes, said Mom, you are. When he pulled open the heavy glass door at the front of the brick building, Bat was overwhelmed by smells and sounds. The lavender peppermint spray they used to clean up the pet accidents, the wet dog scents of shampooing going on in the back of the room, barking, 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 a phone ringing, people talking, a cat's yowls. If there were this much ruckus at school or the playground or anywhere else, Bat would definitely need his earmuff. But here, the sounds and smells didn't bother him. Even the flickering fluorescent lights didn't irritate him very much. I'm thinking about something. So again, we're seeing Bat's tolerance around animals is a lot different than his tolerance around people. And I was thinking back to our theory that Bat's um, acceptance with animals and his flexibility and his loving ways with animals would eventually help him interact with humans and people a little differently. And I think this is another piece of evidence to firm up our theory. I think that Bat will eventually really be able to interact with people the way he interacts with animals because of the practice he's had with animals. Suzanne stood behind the counter running a lady's credit card through the machine with one hand while she answered the ringing phone with another. Dr. Tan's office, she said, waving hello as, at Bat as he walked by. He waved back, but he didn't see anything because he didn't want to bother her. It used to be that he didn't notice if people were busy with other things, but he was better now. Well, at least he usually was. An old lady, old kind of like a grandma, sat on the bench in the waiting room. She held a box on her lap. Bat stopped in front of her. What kind of animal do you have in that box? It's my cat, Pickle, the lady said. He's not feeling 100%. What are his symptoms? Bat said. Are you a veterinarian? The lady asked. No, said Bat. Not yet. Ah, said the lady. Well, he has indigestion and he hasn't been very hungry lately. There were lots of things that Bat could be. Bat looked up at his mom who stood next to him listening. She shrugged. I'll have to examine Pickles to know what's wrong, she said. Then she turned to the lady. I'll see you and Pickles in just a minute or two. I hope Pickles feels better soon, Bat said. Then he followed Mom through the door, 
that separated the waiting room from the back and watched as she took the white coat from its hook. She put it on and then mom was Dr. Pam, a veterinarian, even better than a superhero. One day, Bat would also have that jacket, just like mom. It would be white and it would have five buttons and the words Dr. Pam DMV embroidered just above his heart. Of this, Bat was 99.9% .9 sure because that was as sure as you could be about anything. I've got to go see patients, mom said. You stay close to Lawrence and be a help today, okay? Hey, bad boy, what's up? Lawrence was the only person who called that bad boy. Mom rescued a skunk kit and we're raising it. She says we have to give him to a rescue in a month. Well, three weeks now, but I'm gonna change your mind. We named him Thor, Bat said. Man, Bat is the kind of character who gets fixated on things and he's not going to let it go. Bat's also the kind of character that is going to work really hard to get what he wants. I'm thinking about the research he's doing about keeping a skunk as a pet. I'm thinking about the email he sent Dr. Dragoo. I'm thinking about how they actually named this creature who's living in their home, even though mom said no. And I'm thinking about how he just announced to Lawrence, yeah, I'm keeping this. I'm keeping it. He's staying around. I'm wondering what's going to happen if he doesn't get to keep it. I'm thinking about Bat and what I know about him, and I'm wondering what kind of reaction he will have if things don't go his way. Lawrence laughed. I know all about the kit, he said. Who do you think's taking care of him when you're at school? You are, said Bat. Are you doing a good job? Lawrence rumpled Bat's hair and Bat smoothed it down. Of course I'm doing a good job, Lawrence said. It's the only kind of job I know how to do. Look. <laughs> he reached into the neck of his shirt and pulled out the strangest looking necklace Bat had ever seen. It was made of a t-shirt and ended in a little pouch, just big enough for cradling a skunk kit. Is Thor in there? Bat asked. Lawrence nodded. Yep. The little guy seemed kind of lonely in the kennel, so I made a sling for him out of one of my old t-shirts last night. See? Snug as a bug in a rug. Lawrence opened the pouch so Bat could see inside. There was Thor curled into a sleeping ball. Can I wear him? Bat asked. Of course. We don't want to get him wet when we're walking the dogs, do we? Here you go. Very carefully, Lawrence pulled the sling up over his head and then lowered it over Bat. But the sling, which had barely reached Lawrence's chest, sank all the way to Bat's belly button. We can fix that, said Lawrence and he looped the fabric around into a knot behind Bat's neck to shorten the sling. There, he said, now you are marsupial bat. There are no marsupial bats, Bat said. Marsupial infants need to have strong arms and claws to climb into their mother's pouches. Bats have wings. Bat peered into the pouch to see if Thor had been disturbed by the movement, but the kit was still fast asleep. He's got more fur than he had this morning. Bat said, I can see the black and white growing in. They grow up so fast, Lawrence said. You seem bigger than the last time I saw you too. Not you, said Bat, <laughs> closing up the pouch and tucking it into his shirt. You're already all the way big, Lawrence grinned. <laughs> if I get any bigger, I'll have to buy special order shoes. I already wear the biggest size the shoe store sells. Good thing you're too old to grow, Bat said. Good thing indeed, said Lawrence. Then he said, Thor's a great name, Bat. Did you come up with that? No, said Bat. Jamie did. You're a lucky kid to have such a creative sister, Lawrence said. Did you thank her? No, said Bat. Not yet. Well, there will be time for that later, Lawrence said. How about assisting me with some bats? 
Usually Bat would do just about anything to help Lawrence with Bat, but not right now. Not with Thor in the sling, curled up and asleep. Um, I don't, I don't know, Bat said. Don't worry about the kit, Lawrence said. You can wear an apron and I'll do all the soapy stuff. Lawrence draped a green apron around Bat's neck. Bat tried to make sure it wasn't pressed in too tight against the sling as Lawrence tied the waist strap. All good, Lawrence said. I can't tell if Thor is still breathing, Bat said. Maybe, maybe it's just too tight. Lawrence untied the strap and Bat took off the apron. He pulled open the sling and peered inside. There was Thor, still tightly curled into a little ball, fast asleep. He's okay, sighed Bat. Lawrence patted Bat's shoulder. Maybe you can just keep me company today. How does that sound, Bat Boy? Better, said Bat. I can supervise. <laughs> Good idea, Lawrence said. You can tell me when I use too much soap. That's easy, said Bat, following Lawrence into the holding room, where dogs waited in separate kennels for their bats. You always use way too much soap. I'm wondering something. We talked earlier about how dad feels about bat. And we wondered if dad gets bat and is trying to change him or if dad just doesn't get him. Now I'm thinking about Lawrence. Do you think Lawrence gets bat? I want you to think for just a few seconds. Hold on, hold your eyes here. Does Lawrence get I want you to turn and talk. B, go first. Thank you. 
the, the, um, the, the thing off with that, so, and then, um, Morris would just say that, um, you could supervise me and say if I, um, use too much soap or not. I think that, that is how it was going to be, but, but when I think about it, like, what if that can be played, then, So think about what you know about Lawrence. So use what you are telling us about dad. Does Lawrence understand that? Yes, he does. But if dad changes, like, and he wants to try to call him back for, he might not like it and he might like calling, be called for. So what I'm hearing you say, Jessica, is that Lawrence understands that but if dad changes that, then Lawrence might not understand him anymore. I, I think he, Can you talk just a little bit louder? So I think he, um, I think, um, he can't really take her for granted. I think he would, I think he's being good because it doesn't understand, but he also does. when you were going to jump in. Um, I think Lauren understands that because um, Lauren calls him Bat Boy and um, and Bat like kind of like understands like likes the move. Oh. So what I'm hearing you say is Bat's reaction to Lawrence calling him something other than Bat is a little different than his reaction to when dad calls him something different. He's accepting of Lawrence calling him Bat Boy, isn't he? Yes. So I, we can look at his reaction to see how he might be feeling about that. getting some street cred from Bat. Bat automatically likes him because he respects mom so much more. Mm. Bat climbed up on the counter across from the big silver wa wash basin and watched as Lawrence bent down to open the bar kennel. He scooped up a shaggy white poodle and didn't look very happy about what was about to you're okay, Jeff, Lawrence said. He was using his soothing voice, calm and deep. Jeff is a funny name for a poodle, Bat said. Well, Bat's a funny name for a kid, Lawrence answered, setting Jeff into the wash basin before smiling at Bat. Bat smiled back. 
Then Lawrence got to work, slipping Jeff's head into a restraint so he couldn't jump out of the tub, then turning on the faucet and running his hand under the water to check its temperature before it started spraying down the dog. That's a new restraint, isn't it? Bat asked. Good eye, said Lawrence. He shut off the water and began massaging shampoo into Jeff's curly scalp. The other one was getting rusty, so I ordered this new model. Is that a suction cup connecting it to the wall? It sure is, said Lawrence, and a strong one too. He grabbed a hold of the rope and tugged on it to show Bat how well it was connected to the wall. But with a loud pop, the suction cup came free. I want you to envision this part. Jeff didn't waste any time. With an excited yip, he scrambled over the lip of the wash basin and leaped to the ground, bubbles everywhere. He slipped and slid, and when he landed, his nails were scraping against the linoleum floor. Lawrence reached to grab him, but Jeff was too fast. He scrambled towards the door. Bat pulled his legs up onto the counter and crossed them, one arm wrapping protectively around Thor and his sling. The uh, air smelled like warm, wet dog and strawberry shampoo. Lawrence's fingers were inches away from Jeff's when his heel found a puddle of soapy water. One moment he was standing and the next he was flat on his back. Are you okay? Bat asked, but he didn't climb down from the perch. His first priority was keeping the kit safe and dry. I've been better, Lawrence groaned. Jeff, who had discovered that the door was actually closed tight, returned to peer down at Lawrence. He lowered his head and lovingly licked Lawrence's cheek with his long pink tongue. 